For parts manufactured using molding techniques such as plastic and metal injection molding and die casting, wall thickness is a critical factor to determine strength, durability and weight, but also manufacturability. If a wall is too thick or too thin, you may get short shots, flow lines, sink marks or warpage. OnShape's thickness analysis tool helps you visualize problems before they occur. Select one or more parts and the analysis begins. This time it's super quick because this analysis has been run previously and the results have been fetched from the cache. The color coding indicates the thickness at every location on the model, so if we zoom in on the red area and hover the mouse over each face, we can see that this boss goes from 8 down to 2 and then down to 0 thickness at the edge. This is the rolling ball method that measures the largest sphere that fits inside the part at each point and is extremely accurate, but as it approaches a sharp corner, the value tends to zero. That's why Onshape also includes the ray method, which fires a ray normal to each face and measures the next closest wall, which is perfect for thin features like ribs. Other methods include ray and rolling ball gradient. This measures the rate of change of thickness, which is a critical factor in determining how fast a wall goes from thick to thin, or vice versa, which can cause short shots or warpage. There are other ways to interpret the results by editing the scale to find only the thick or thin regions. You can drag the slider or enter a value. Now, all areas less than 6mm are displayed in purple. Adjusting the range by increasing the minimum and lowering the maximum, you can further focus on problem areas by dimming the color scale, so only the areas of interest are highlighted. Since the thickness analysis display is persistent, you can use it as a guide while designing. Here we see the thick red area is caused by the hole in this boss. Editing the extrude feature and changing it from blind to up to next puts a hole right through the part, but adding an offset fixes it. Once the model has regenerated, the analysis recalculates. The results are then processed, refined and shown on screen. Since intermediate results are shown, you don't have to wait for the refinement to finish to see that the problem is solved. The thickness analysis tool can be used on several parts at the same time in a multi-part part studio and, in true Onshape style, you can work on other aspects of the design in other tabs while you're waiting for the analysis to finish. Once it has, you'll be notified. Thickness analysis in Onshape is a powerful tool to help designers and manufacturers create better products faster and with fewer errors. When adding fillers and chamfers to active sheet metal parts, you'll now get a reminder that there's a better feature more suited to the task. You can still use the existing features, but the new corner break feature combines fillets and chamfers into one with some new selection tools. You can select an edge as normal, but since this feature is sheet metal aware, you can also select a vertex, so you don't need to rotate the model to make selections. This also means that you can easily add corner breaks on the flat view, and now, Fillets and chamfers can also be added to bend and corner reliefs, giving you the flexibility to remove sharp edges anywhere on the sheet metal part. Adding chamfers with the corner break feature is just as easy, by selecting an edge or a vertex. Another advantage of this feature is that you can also now add fillets to chamfered edges. With one feature, all possible corner breaks are now possible. Building surfaces from bad curves is a bad idea, as the control point grid on this surface demonstrates. The curves driving this surface were generated from intersection curves, from ruled surfaces driven from imported curves. Whether you're using imported curves or native curves in Onshape, the new Edit Curve feature can be used to smooth out and generally improve the quality of your curves. Curves that have bad parameterization or are otherwise noisy, can be reapproximated, set to a desired degree, and even planarized.
using a best fit method to keep the control points within the same plane. The control points on the edited curve can also be manipulated to create an entirely new shape if required. The important thing to note is that the ID of the edited curve is exactly the same as the source curve, so existing downstream features that reference it will not be broken. They will just update as expected, but with superior quality as can be seen in the surface analysis. Curves that are supposed to lie on a plane can be planarized to one of the default planes or to a selected plane or make connector. For local edits to existing curves, you can also elevate the degree, giving you more control points while maintaining the shape. The Edit Curve feature improves curves and surfaces for better quality models. When adding dimensions in a sketch, the entities that you select now highlight and stay highlighted until you place the dimension. This makes it easier to visualize which entities you've selected and easier to place the dimension. This also applies when selecting faces on the model to help you create robust references when sketching. Whole callouts now have more control over text justification. A callout can be set to auto, which is the current behavior, or you can specify if you want it to be centered or left or right justified. The setting is maintained even if the callout is moved. This release includes a new product structure view of your design data available from the documents page. Structure view shows released elements in the particular folder location with all of the references they contain. In this example, the engine assembly has been released and structure view shows all of the subassemblies and parts it contains indented below. It does not matter which documents the references are in or even if they reside in a different folder in Onshape. Since they are a part of the released structure of the engine assembly, they are presented here in Structure View. You may show additional properties using the Add Columns button and easily auto size the columns to fit nicely on screen. If metadata is missing, like a description field shown here, you can edit it directly from the Properties panel on the right side. You can also directly view all where used data and the revision history of an element from their right side panel. In this example, Structure View is clearly showing us, at a glance with an icon, that a newer revision of the backplate part and subassembly have been released already, but they are not in use in the current released revision of the top level assembly. The release candidate can even be opened directly from the revision history panel. Structure View provides a complete picture of the most important aspect of your design, your released product itself. Customizable keyboard shortcuts have now been extended to include all features and operations in part studios and assemblies. So, if you create a lot of chamfers in your designs, you can add a shortcut. Or, if you do a lot of surfacing or sheet metal, every command is now easily accessible through a custom keyboard shortcut, for example, creating a flange. You may struggle to find a key combination that is not already in use, as some may be on shape defaults and some may be browser or operating system controlled, but if you don't use the fillet command, you can simply override it. This also extends to view commands, so if you like to switch between orthographic and perspective views, then assign a new shortcut. These shortcuts will of course be available whenever you sign into Onshape on any device, anywhere. The Action Items user interface has been completely reworked to make it easier to navigate. The type and status filters are along the top and the sort order over on the right, but the way you filter who a task has been assigned to is all new. You can add multiple people in this field, or you can remove everyone to see everything. Over on the right, a new keyword search tool filters the list. Or if you want to customize the filters even more, you can add any number of predefined filters. So if you want to find all the high priority tasks, you can. 
This makes tasks and other action items much easier to manage. The decal feature can be used to add images to parts, such as company logos, certification marks, or warning and hazard labels. For product and marketing images, Render Studio can now reuse any decals you've already added to the model to save time and maintain continuity between the detailed product design and the final rendered image, so you don't have to update Render Studio every time you add or make a change to a decal. Decals are listed in the scene list as an appearance with a decal icon and can be easily edited in the appearance panel to adjust the brightness and contrast in addition to other standard appearance controls. Thanks for watching. Click the logo to subscribe or see some of our other videos linked here.